Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sunday, the 17th of January, 2021, in the second week, in Ordinary Time. Our daily prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit that I may grow in the knowledge of your great love and truth. Let your Spirit be a flame in my heart that I may joyfully seek to do your will in all things. Amen. Daily Scripture from the Magnificat. But first, an overview. I have waited, waited for the Lord. In our yearning, John the Baptist sends us to the Lamb of God. Jesus looks at us and addresses us with a breathtaking question. What are you looking for? For Jesus draws us to himself through the longings of our heart. The Lord once said to St. Catherine of Siena, I who am infinite God want you to serve me with what is infinite, and you have nothing infinite except your soul's love and desire. God's law is within our heart, for he has given us that love and desire to lead us to him and that we may delight in doing his will. We are even so bold as to say, we are not our own, because we have the Holy Spirit within us who joins us to Christ. Whenever we hear Christ's command, we are freed to answer with Samuel, here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. A reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 3. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me, but Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, The Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 40 Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard me cry. And he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Sacrifice or offering you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. 
holocaust or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lip, as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your bodies are members of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. Alleluia, Alleluia. They saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 135. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew the brother of Simon Peter was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation of the Day from the Magnificat. Everything we've been looking for. Everything now bears the mark of the almost inconceivable exaltation of humanity through the incarnation of God and through the baptism which implants in man a new principle of life, participation in the life of Christ and the Holy Trinity. To the extent that every baptized person gives himself up to Christ and follows Christ, living from Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, he lives no more, but Christ lives in him. He thus participates in the unlimited breadth and fullness of Christ. He who is immersed in the life of Christ, he in whom Christ is truly imitated, the saint becomes a personality. 
No matter what his essential endowments are, the lack of gifts and the modest natural structure are no longer something depressing, narrowing, and limiting because they have been transformed into that moving simplicity which is penetrated with the supreme wisdom of Jesus Christ and in the pulsations of the most sacred heart in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The saint is strong in his weakness because he has fully developed the supernatural life received in baptism. One who no longer lives in himself but in whom Christ lives, breathes a fullness, a breath, and height, whose brightness surpasses even all the fullness and greatness of the highest purely natural genius. To die in ourselves, in order that Christ may live in us, is thus the only path leading to full personality in a far truer and higher sense of the word. This dying to oneself does not, however, mean the giving up of individuality. On the contrary, the more a man becomes another Christ, the more he realizes the original, unduplicable thought of God which he embodies. Of course, this is only possible because Christ is the Son of Man, because the whole of humanity is contained in him, and above all, because he is not only man, but also the entire fullness of the Godhead lives in his heart. Every imitation of a man, even of the greatest, richest, most gifted man, even of a genius, would mean the giving up of one's individuality, a leveling, a renunciation of personality, not to mention the fact that an absolute, literal imitation of any man is entirely impossible. In relation to Christ, it is quite the opposite. The mysterious truth is that the unique imitation design of God is fully and ultimately realized in a man only when he is transformed into Christ. Can one find more powerful, more deeply expressed individualities than St. Catherine of Siena, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Augustine, St. Paul, St. Gregory VII? This was written by Dietrich von Hildebrand, who died in 1977 and was a German convert philosopher and theologian. He was a courageous and outspoken critic of the Nazi regime and was highly regarded by several popes. Daily Bible Verse from the Laudate I have found the Messiah we have found the Messiah. Then he, Andrew, brought Peter to Jesus. John 1.41 Andrew found Jesus because his heart's great desire was to meet the expected Messiah. If your heart's great desire is to see millions of dollars in your bank account, you may miss Jesus even if he is knocking at your door. The Bible teaches Find your delight in the Lord who will give you your heart's desire. Psalm 37, 4 Our desires are very important. Watch your heart carefully to see the desires driving you. St. Ignatius Loyola is a saint that understands a great deal about desires. He said, Desires make a man. There are two types of desires. One, desires placed in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Two, carnal desires. You know where they come from. Jesus draws us to his love and plan for us through our desires. Andrew brought his brother Peter to Jesus after he met Jesus another desire fulfilled. 
Andrew is one of my patron saints because he is a born evangelist. He sees the good news. He seeks out his brother right away to share it. Every day you hear the word of God. You read the scriptures. Ask the Lord to give you the desire to share the gospel. The good news is the best news in the world. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Meditation Who is Jesus for you? John calls Jesus the Lamb of God and thus signifies Jesus' mission as the one who redeems us from our sins. The Blood of the Passover Lamb, Exodus 12 delivered the Israelites from their oppression in Egypt and from the plague of death. The Lord Jesus freely offered up his life for us on the cross as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 The blood which is poured out for us on the cross cleanses, heals, frees us from our slavery to sin and from the wages of sin which is death. Romans 6.23 And the destruction of both body and soul in hell. Matthew 10.28 It is significant that John was the son of the priest Zechariah, who participated in the daily sacrifice of the Lamb in the temple for the sins of the people. Exodus 29 in Jesus, John saw the true and only sacrifice which could deliver us from bondage to sin, death, and the powers of hell. How did John know the true identity of Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of the world? John 1, 29. The Holy Spirit revealed to John Jesus' true nature, such as John bore witness that this is the Son of God. How can we be certain that Jesus is truly the Christ, the Son of the living God? The Holy Spirit makes the Lord, Jesus Christ, known to us through the gift of faith. God gives us freely of His Spirit, that we may comprehend, with enlightened minds and eyes of faith, the great mystery and plan of God to unite all things to His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you seek? John, in his characteristic humility, was eager to point beyond himself to the Christ, means anointed one and Messiah. He did not hesitate to direct his own disciples to the Lord Jesus. When two of John's disciples began to seek Jesus out, Jesus took the initiative to invite them into his company. He did not wait for them to get his attention. Instead, he met them halfway. He asked them one of the most fundamental questions of life. What are you looking for? Jesus asks each one of us the same question. What are you searching for? Do you know the meaning and purpose for your life? Only God, the Father and author of life, can answer that question and make our purpose fully known to us. That is why the Lord Jesus invites each one of us to draw near to himself. He wants us to know him personally, to know what he came to do for us and what he wants to offer us. Come and see. Come and see is the Lord's invitation for each one of us to discover the joy of friendship and communion with the one who made us in love for love. St. Augustine of Hippo reminds us that it is God, our Creator and Redeemer, who seeks us out even when we are not looking for Him. If you hadn't been called by God, 
what could you have done to turn back? Didn't the very one who called you when you were opposed to him make it possible for you to turn back? It is God who initiates and who draws us to himself. Without his mercy and help, we could not find him on our own. When we find something of great value, it's natural to want to share the good news of our discovery with our family, friends, and neighbors. When Andrew met Jesus and discovered that he was truly the Messiah, he immediately went to his brother Simon and told him the good news. Andrew brought his brother to meet Jesus so he could come and see for himself. When Jesus saw Simon approaching the he immediately reached out to Simon in the same way he had done for Andrew earlier. Jesus looked at Simon and revealed that he knew who Simon was and where he came from even before Simon had set his eyes on Jesus. Jesus gave Simon a new name which signified that God had a personal call and mission for him. Jesus gave Simon the name Cephas, which is the Aramaic word for rock. Cephas is translated as Peter, Petros in Greek, and Petrus in Latin, which also literally means rock. To call someone a rock is one of the greatest compliments in the ancient world. The rabbis had a saying that when God saw Abraham, he exclaimed, I have discovered a rock to found the world upon. Through Abraham, God established a nation for himself. Through faith, Peter grasped who Jesus truly was, the Anointed One, Messiah and Christ, and the only begotten Son of God. The New Testament describes the church as a spiritual house or temple with each member joined together as living stones. 1 Peter 2.5 Faith in Jesus Christ makes us into rocks or spiritual stones. The Holy Spirit gives us the gift of faith to know the Lord Jesus personally, power to live the gospel faithfully, and courage to witness the truth and joy of the gospel to others. The Lord Jesus is ever ready to draw us to himself. Do you seek to grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus Christ, fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit that I may grow in the knowledge of your great love and truth. Let your spirit be a flame in my heart that I may joyfully seek to do your will in all things. Amen. Sleepy Had Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. 1 Samuel 3.3 3. Will you sleep through 2021? Or will you wake up and answer God's call? Many people, even religious people, will tell you to go back to sleep. 1 Samuel 3.5 Instead, you should turn to God and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 1 Samuel 3.9 2021 can be the greatest year of your life. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it so much as dawned on men what God has prepared for those who love Him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 Some of those reading this will die or go to heaven this year. Others may be just moments from hell unless they repent and turn to Jesus. Some will make the most important decisions and face the greatest challenges of their lives in 2021. If we knew what will happen internationally in 2021, we would immediately fall on our knees in prayer. 
That is why we read, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Keep careful watch over your conduct. Do not act like fools, but like thoughtful men. Make the most of the present opportunity, for these are evil days. Do not continue in ignorance, but try to discern the will of the Lord. Ephesians 5.14 Romans 13.11 and Thessalonians 5.6 Our prayer. Father, thank you for creating me to live for you in 2021. God's promise to us. You must know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is within the spirit you have received from God. You are not your own. You have been purchased and at a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ Truth is to be sought in the Holy Scriptures, not eloquence. All Holy Scripture should be read in the spirit in which it was written. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May your peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.